the man known to history as Valentine Strasser was born as Valentine Isagragbo Meove Strasser on 26 of April 1967 in Freetown, Sierra Leone, West Africa, a country with a population of around 2.6 million at the time. His father was a teacher, his mother a small town businesswoman. At the time of Valentine's birth, Sir Albert Magai was the Prime Minister of Sierra Leone and the country was a parliamentary government. Valentine Strasser grew up in the neighborhood of Allentown in the east end of Freetown in the capital of Sierra Leone where he completed his secondary education at the Sierra Leone Grammar School. A gifted student, especially in the subjects of math and chemistry. Not long after graduating from high school, Strasser enlisted in the Republic of Sierra Leone Military Forces RSLMF, at age 18, perhaps unexpectedly so, as everyone around him thought he would go to university. Valentine Strasser grew up in a country which was going through a list of bad leaders and political upheaval which would determine where he would end up in life later on. The Western African country of Sierra Leone was formed in 1787 in Freetown by freed enslaved African people arriving from England, hence the capital's name Freetown. This is similar to the neighboring country of Liberia. It then became a British protectorate in 1808 before the people of Sierra Leone obtained their independence from Britain in 1961 led by Sir Milton Magai, a medical doctor. There was a brief period of relatively functional democracy under the leadership of Sir Milton Magai after independence. Magai unfortunately died in 1964 and was succeeded by his less respected stepbrother Albert Magai. He was not a good leader at all and was known to disperse vital positions in government to people of his own tribe, the Mende tribe, regardless of their qualifications. The decline of Sierra Leone accelerated under the next leader, Siaka Stevens, a trade unionist who was elected in 1967 but did not become prime minister until the following year because of a series of coups. In 1971 then, Siaka Stevens declared himself president. Charming but spectacularly corrupt, he systematically degraded the state institutions and operated a system of personal patronage. He plundered Sierra Leone's diamond wharf and even entered into negotiations with an American company to have toxic waste dumped in the country in exchange for a fee of about $25 million. It is said that the sheer corruption and violent uh, repression of President Shaka Stevens' regime extinguished the hopes of an entire generation and laid the foundation for the country's brutal civil war later on. Following riots in Freetown of discontent of his rule, Stevens stepped down in November 1985 at the age of 80 and he left office with an estimated fortune of $500 million, so half a billion USA dollars, after being in power for 17 years. President Shaka Stevens handed the nation's uh, preeminent position to Major General Joseph Momo, a notoriously inept leader who was just as bad as Shaka Stevens, if not worse. Despite his initial promises of uh, reform, corruption persisted under him. He was so bad that he acquired the nickname of Dandogo, which means idiot in the language of the Limba people of northern Sierra Leone. By 1991, Amomo had been in power for six years and the nation was ripe for revolt because of his bad leadership. In the meantime, the young Valentine Strasser had risen ranks to become an army officer in the government of Joseph Momo. Valentine Strasser served in the neighboring war-torn country of Liberia as part of a regional peacekeeping mission, the Economic Community of West African States Monitoring Group, ECOMOG. Civil war had broken out there in Liberia in 1989, unfortunately. ECOBOG, the military wing of ECOWAS, was attempting to secure order in the capital of Monrovia, which was ravaged by warlords. And one of those warlords was Charles Taylor, who had a man called Fordi Sanko from Sierra Leone in his ranks.
After seven months in Liberia, Valentine Streiser returned home after he was injured in the left leg by shrapnel. But unfortunately, the war followed him home. In March 1991, rebel fighters uh, led by the notorious Fordi Sanko crossed over from Liberia into the remote diamond-rich eastern part of Sierra Leone. The war from Liberia had spilled over into Sierra Leone. This incursion of as many as 2,000 mercenaries on loan from the Liberian warlord Charles Taylor marked the beginning of Sierra Leone's decade-long conflict which lasted from 1991 and ended in 2002, killing thousands of people and displacing thousands and thousands of people. The rebels came to be known as the Revolutionary United Front RUF, and they aimed to remove the highly unpopular Joseph Momo from power. The notorious Fordi Sanko, the rebel leader of uh, RUF, was a former army corporal in the Sierra Leonean army and one time worked as a photographer even. And like others, among the initial RUF leadership, he had received training at the Muammar al Gaddafi's World Revolutionary Headquarters in Benghazi, Libya and fought under Charles Taylor in Liberia, as I have said. After a short while, 1991, the Sierra Leone war had brought the country close to ruin. The young and ambitious soldier Valentine Stracer and his colleagues were dispatched to the eastern district of uh, Kailahun to deal with the rebellion and insurgency led by Ford Sanko and the RUF. Now, as things heated up at the war front, Stracer and his colleagues ran out of supplies such as uh, boots and other necessary military equipment to do their job. The weapons given to Strasser's battalion front were no match for those uh, the rebels wielded. The soldiers had guns from the Second World War and oftentimes the guns couldn't fire at crucial times while the weapons used by the rebels were the most sophisticated at the time that fired at the touch of a finger. Uh, the rebels used funds from the diamond mines to purchase sophisticated weaponry famously known as uh, blood diamonds. The government soldiers appeal to the Sierra Leonean government to get them the basic unnecessary items fell on deaf ears, coupled with unpaid salaries. These soldiers were risking their lives but they were not well looked after at all. President Momo and the politicians seemed not to care. Then, on April 29, 1992, Captain Strasser led a team of young soldiers, which included two of his best friends, uh, most of these were in the early 20s, uh, to march in their combat gear from Kailahun to the State House in protest of their conditions. Now, according to reports, the appearance of the soldiers in the capital shocked many. The state government panicked and the hugely unpopular President Momo, due to lack of support from his own military security men, hid in his bedroom and was found in his dressing gown by these young men. He was bundled in a helicopter and exiled to Conakry, Guinea. Now, the funny thing is, the young soldiers did not intend to overthrow the government at that stage, no. Yes, there had been such discussions of overthrowing the government, but this was not the plan, at least not that day. They just wanted to present their grievances. Now, these young soldiers were also surprised at the speed at which the government collapsed. They found themselves marching towards power and just went with the flow. The mutineers largely were uneducated men from the rural villages, so they asked the more charismatic Captain Valentine Strasser to lead a provisional military government or a military junta. Strasser, with his secondary education, was viewed among the group as the more educated one. In addition to his charisma, he was also non-threatening, a largely mild-mannered man, a shy man who they could easily manipulate. And just like that, Valentine Strasser three days after his 25th birthday, became not only Africa's but the world's youngest head of state. Valentine Stresser's coup was hugely popular. There were promises of a fresh start for the country. Young people mobilized themselves to keep a free town clean, which the soldiers often joined in the cleaning exercises. Street art and celebratory murals of Valentine Stresser and his young colleagues flourished. Uh, the Messiah 
had seemingly arrived. The new rulers of Sierra Leone called themselves the National Provisional Ruling Council, NPRC, given the low bar set by his predecessors such as President Momo and Stevens, he did some positive things. He endorsed a two-year transitional plan to democracy, cleaned the trash from the capital, resumed tax collections, cut street crime, slashed civil service rules by one-fourth, and lowered inflation from 115% to less than 15%. The young leader quickly ingratiated himself with world leaders uh, such as Bill Clinton, John Major, and Nelson Mandela. So all was going good. But, but, there is a but in this story. Having found themselves in power, the young men found style to and ruled well, just like young people of their age. Strasser and his NPRC became flamboyant figures overnight. They wore Ray-Ban sunglasses, designer clothing. A Valentine Strasser moved into this plush Kabas Lodge located on 25 acres at the summit of a Juba Hill in Freetown with expansive views of the Atlantic Ocean and forested hills. There were parties too. Strasser and uh, his young officers knew how to party. Strasser made Valentine's Day a great national celebration. Valentine's Day. I guess his name being Valentine had nothing to do with it. Bob Marley's birthday. Yes, Bob Marley, the great reggae icon. His birthday was also made into a great national celebration. Valentine Strasser was seen chilling at the beach in Cyprus while attending an important conference in a t-shirt uh, written, Sunny days in Cyprus. The junta loved their women. They favored pale-skinned women, creating a craze for bleaching among girls in free town. Women who tried to lighten up their skin tone with chemicals were called the Wonchi Girls. These were wild times in Sierra Leone, and this led to the people translating the Junta acronym to something similar like we are led by children. I'm sure I guessed that surely this would not last long. The war was still raging on in the background. The real face major blunder happened earlier on in Strasser's rule. Seven months after the junta came into power in Freetown, the NPRC government announced that it had uncovered an attempted coup and disarmed the instigators. Executions followed on a beach on the outskirts of the city, but the 29 people who were executed were actually innocent, and soon afterwards, Strasser declared a nationwide period of mourning. I don't think people of Sierra Leone were just about to forgive and forget and move on. years into his almost accidental regime, Africa's youngest dictator was engaged in a civil war which he was losing, surviving coup attempts, and faced resentment and global condemnation for executing enemies, muzzling the press, and drafting boys as young as 12 into the army. The military lost its discipline, the junior officers were ordering their seniors around. There were disturbing reports of atrocities committed against the civilian population not only by rebel forces but also by government troops. Civilians were subject to horrific acts of mutilation including having their parts cut off, incidents of the other weight for women, and forced labor were widespread and many civilians were used as unwilling human shields or held in captivity and subjected to repeated violence by the combatants. In January 1994, Strasser's government began an infamous army recruitment drive, enlisting children from the age of 12. Army ranks soared from 5,000 in 1991 to 12,000 in 1994. The government was actually close to defeating the RUF when Strasser called for an ill-advised ceasefire in December 1994, which allowed the RUF to regroup and became a threat again. The rebels were so close to overthrowing the government having occupied some parts of Freetown, areas never before occupied by the rebels even under his incompetent predecessors. Valentine Strasser employed foreign South African mercenaries called Executive Outcomes who drove back the rebels and recaptured some of the diamond mines for a share of the diamonds and cash. 
but by now the writing was on the wall for Valentine Strasser. He had failed his people miserably. Strasser's time on the Golden Stool ended in exactly three years, eight months, and 15 days after he was thrown by his deputy, Brigadier General Julius Mada Bayo, who is the president of Sierra Leone today. Strasser had attended a meeting with uh, minimum security. His deputy then produced a, a gun from under his table and pointed it at him. Uh, he was then bundled in a helicopter and exiled into the country of Gambia. In January 1996, the UN threw Strasser out of the Gambia after offering him a bursary to study law at Warwick University in the UK. Despite efforts to pursue higher education in the UK, Strasser faced disdain and hostility, his reputation tarnished by the atrocities committed during his rule. There was outrage and news headlines reporting of a former dictator on the campus. After one year, he left university. He moved to London where his life did not get any better. He was also abused by other Sierra Leoneans even at nightclubs now and again. Some of them had lost their relatives during his rule so they saw the opportunity to let him know what they thought of him. Estranged from his family and country, he wandered through life, a broken man grappling with the weight of his past and the uncertainty of his future. Strasser, now 34, fled to Gambia on 27th of October 2000 after a newspaper, The Observer, disclosed that he was living in Islington. He had been unemployed for two years and he had changed his first name to Reginald. He was detained in Gambia upon arrival but he was deported back to Britain where then he was denied entry. Then he was retained to Gambia and then was detained by military officers on arrival. He was eventually sent back to Sierra Leone where he struggled for basic necessities such as food and clothing and found solace in alcohol. For now, Valentine Strasser lives in a remote area in obscurity surviving on handouts. He has had his fair share of health issues and looked twice his age. A shadow of the man who was once the most powerful and stylish man in Sierra Leone. No one could tell that the once dashing history making leader Valentine Strasser would end up destitute somewhere in remote Sierra Leone living off his mother. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think of Valentine Strasser. I'll see you in my next video.